This is Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. and welcome to Guardian Radio AM. Today is Monday, Monday, January 23rd, and it's a little after 11 o'clock in the morning. Once again, this is C.A. Nuri, and I shall be your host for the day as I have a discussion about the Bahamas and the status quo. For the past couple of days, past couple of weeks, past couple of months, I've been having a series of shows about what is Bohemiana, and I was also trying to define... Uh, what is the middle class? What is the political class? What is the working class? I also try to have a, a, a series of conversation about things that we should be doing in the Bahamas, right? Because the conversation also spread towards things that we are doing wrong, how we see ourselves culturally, what are we as, who we are as Bohemian. Today, I wanted to continue that conversation. Today, I happen to read, have read the Prime Minister, a newspaper report about the Prime Minister's uh, contribution about what they'll be concentrating on for this next year. I'm trying to pull it up so I can read an excerpt of it. Um, so give me two seconds so I can do that. Uh, and I found it entertaining actually reading it, right? And more so, I found it entertaining that the reporter, and I can call his name too, because he's a Guardian uh, reporter. Uh, his name is Travis Cartwright Carroll, and, the, and this newspaper clipping is January 20th, 2023, and said, Davis outlines agenda for 2023. And this is my conversation. I, my conversation, whether Mr. Davis's agenda is enough, should we be content and satisfied for it? Should we be celebrating, right? Did he say something profound? And um, my premise today is that the people that we voted against in 1967, bringing in that majority rule conversation, we have morphed into becoming. Once upon a time, the Progressive Liberal Party was the progressive and liberal party to vote for because they touted change. They touted revolutionary, revolution. But that party, and by extension, the FNM party, by extension, all the other all of the other parties have now become the conservative. They have betrayed us. They have changed. They have gone backwards. They are no longer progressive and liberal, and I'm including the FNM and the other third parties in that, because they cannot think of new ideas to transform the Bahamas. It's the same status quo which the UBP used to do. Right? And um, I'm going to read this, uh, the excerpt. I want you to see the shade, the shade that um, the reporter, Travis Cartwright Carroll, did. And I found it entertaining. I smiled at, at, at uh, Travis Carroll and, um, and, and said, um, this is editorially. Because <laughs> he gave it his opinion. But let me show you the shade, right? See the shade, first shade. Though he provided no specific specifics, Prime Minister Philip Davis said yesterday that his administration will focus on education, growing the economy, and tackling the scourge of violent crime in the country over the next year. Davis, who spoke at the 32nd annual Bahamas Business Outlook, said his government intends to deal with the high cost of the country. We will continue, in this unquote, we will continue the growth of the GDP and revenue, maximize the amount of investment in the country, and maintain efforts to reduce our debt, the Prime Minister said. That said, we will put a particular focus on reducing the cost of living and making efforts to lift people out of poverty. Even though the inflationary pressures are largely the result of global events and foreign economies, we will do whatever we can to ease the burden of the bohemian consumers. However, see the shade again, the Prime Minister, Prime Minister did not indicate what measures his administration intends to take 
to lift people out of poverty or ease the burden of consumers. You know, recently the Minister of Social Services, Obi Willishkam, recently said the Department of Social Services has, in recent months, seen a growing demand for assistance. And it goes on, and you can always read that Guardian um, report, and Davis outlines the agenda for 2023, economy, education, crime, fight to receive priority, and this was in January 20th, 2023. I read that, to put it in the record, because surely the Prime Minister and his administration thought that this speech was good. He provided no detail in them, so we have no idea, no clue what he plans to do. We must accept it, say, man, whatever he plans to do, it's going to be a good plan. And I'm trying to say, is that sufficient? Is that progressive? Is that liberal? Are we content with just mere words, consistently just mere words to make you feel good? I like the prime minister, no. I think that right now he might be one of the better prime ministers we've, we've ever had, better than Lyndon. However, I tired of the second-rate uh, governance we're receiving. I inbox a friend, a friend who's uh, living abroad, a bohemian who's living abroad. He has a big time foreign job in, in one of those countries there, right? And um, we debate about the Bahamas and where we should be going, right? And we go, what's up back and forth? I'm trying to get him on the show, but he's always busy dealing with celebrities and whatever it is, right? And I said, okay, as we exchange, I got a nugget. A nugget I say, I'm going to play for you because I want us to analyze what exactly is happening. What should we be demanding for this 50th? Independence celebration, for majority rule, uh, what it means. And I'm saying that we as Bohemian are not holding our government accountable because we should be fertile. We need to be fertile. We need to be advancement. I thought during this 50th uh, celebration, we would have talked about some constitutional reforms. This year, I expected like three, four, five different constitutional elections of uh, voting, casting, or whatever it is, or conversation. I thought that the academia, the University of the Bahamas would have been putting out and producing papers like crazy, defining what we are as the Bahamas, as Bahamians, where we could be proud. I expected that we would be traveling abroad, heralding who we are as a country, and people marking our manner and say, my God, that's the best little country in the world. Surely, they're sim similar to Singapore, and, 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 and Estonia and stuff like that. I, I thought it would be heralded as such, not basically putting band-aids on things. And it makes us feel as if the cutting in on India. I want the producer to play that clip because I want you to hear what I was, the conversation, parts of the conversation I had with my friend, clip, and so, and so I can analyze it. Now in that video clip that I've sent to you several times, and, I, and, and it always plays in my head what Fred Hampton said. Fred Hampton said, if you don't have a political education in why you doing this exercise, as a nation, why are we doing this? Eventually, you're going to turn into the imperialist, just like the people you so-called wanted independence from. And you're going to go and turn into thieves. He said this as a 21 year old, 50 years ago. He said, when we get the opportunity to be in charge, if we don't know why we're in charge and what we do in this elective for, we're gonna turn into thieves and we're gonna be having the same problems, same issues. We're gonna be jealous who was there before. And we're watching it right now. We have no idea why we're doing this exercise called FNM and PLP. We have no idea what we doing for the nation. What is the national plan? Where are we trying to go? We don't have one. People, we don't have a national plan. The people hasn't been consulted as where we are going as a unit. But the Prime Minister have a right to say that we're going to be concentrating on this one, two thing. And I say, boss, do you, have you consulted us? Have you included me in this conversation as to where we are going? So you can then pick and choose what aspect of our issues you're going to concentrate on. It can't be just you telling me what it is you're going to be concentrating on and you ain't consult me. People, we don't have a national plan. We don't know where we're going as a country. We are drift. We sailing, we are on a rickety boat, and we go into wherever the sands and the, and the breeze and, and, and the ocean. And I watching the captain of the ship and who's saying, man, all dressed up in the cal and all the medals on him. And I say, and he's saying that we're going forward. 
and I say forward in which direction? Well, I know which direction we'll be going forward. Nothing wrong with us because nobody saying, hey, 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 Captain, <laughs> the ship's sinking and <laughs> we going the wrong way because I won't go forward with you. I won't go next forward. <laughs> Stop forward going west. <laughs> See, that's, that's why I'm concerned. Though. I'm concerned because behemoths have let us down. The, the, 19, the 1967 and then post-1973 generation has let us down by not holding our politicians accountable to say, no, you're not doing a good job. Like I said, 50th celebration, all kind of things supposed to be happening. All kind of revolutionary things supposed to be happening. The changing, uh, the dynamo of the Bahamas is supposed to be so profound that we should be the envy of the Caribbean. Envy of the region. We should be then touted by Canada, United Kingdom, and United States to say, wow, look at them. They get things under control. They think they be, 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 be being battled, but they have their, short, their, their shield and they slash in the problems when they come in front of them. And I say, that ain't happening. That ain't happening. Producer, play that clip one more time. Play that clip one more time because we need to analyze it. That the pig, you don't watch Animal Farm? When the pigs in that, 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 that narrative start transforming into the, to the men of the plantation, and I believe our politicians, the pigs, have now been morphed on the, 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 the likes, the, 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 charis, the characteristics of the colonizer. We are being governed by colonizers, capitalists who want to destroy us and keep us the same way. They want no change. It's still $80,000, $80,000 to get a piece of property, right? It's still, we question whether our BGCSE results is, 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 is adequate, right? We still having challenges. What keeping the light on? My light was off the other day. I mean, it's black, just black. I say 50 years later in independence and the light can't even stay on. We can't even brag to say, well, at least the light don't turn off. This is us. This is our real reality. Right, and I'm listening to the prime minister's speech today, and everyone stand up and clap and Mr. Prime Minister. And I said, "Wait, wait, wait!" But he didn't give us no detail. Is that what you're calling good? No, man, that's a C minus, <laughs> C minus speech. Let's pick someone else to give a speech. That's a that's a C minus speech. I can't be heralding a C minus speech when we need a B plus A minus just to get to the next level. And play it again. I want people to appreciate what we are going through. That the PLP and the F and M have turned to the colonizers, and they have colonizers to say that they're doing things not for our benefit, not for the colonies' benefit, but for their benefit. The things are not working because it, it's for their the politicals. Don't it's for their benefit, and they say they like. You see this immigration problem. You see this immigration problem. It exists because someone is capitalizing on it. Right? One of the issues was happening why people are up in arms is for three years we have been saying that um, we have an issue with the shanty towns being there and, and the court case have an injunction and it's urgent. But the judge ain't see it urgent, not even in on their agenda. The government ain't see it urgent, even in on their agenda. It, it, that's supposed to be the most urgent because it's a constitutional issue. It was a constitutional motion was raised. Right? Saying whether, it, if it's a breach of the Constitution, whether the government can bulldoze a shanty town. The moment they mention the Constitution, it's supposed to be an urgent. Solve that in months, weeks. Three, four, but four years later, we still wait. My, play, it, play it again. Play it again, because I get hot. I get hot. And I need people to understand that we're moving towards our 50th, and we're broken. Play it again, producer. Now, in that video clip I've sent to you several times, and, I, and, and it always plays in my head what Fred Hampton said. Fred Hampton said, if you don't have a political education in why you're doing this exercise, as a nation, why are we doing this? Eventually, you're going to turn into the imperialist just like the people you so-called wanted independence from, and you're going to go and turn into thieves. He said this as a 21-year-old 50 years ago. He said, when we get the opportunity to be in charge, if we don't know why we're in charge and what we're doing this as a collective for, we're going to turn into thieves. And we're going to be having the same problems, same issues. We're going to be just like the imperialists who was there before. And you're watching it right now. We have no idea why we're doing this exercise called FNM and PLP. 
We have no idea what we do doing for the nation. What is the national plan? Where are we trying to go? We don't have one. And if you wish, you go onto YouTube and, and search Fred Hampton on the importance of a revolutionary education. He was 21 year, years old when he made this speech, this contribution. Do we have 21 year olds who can do that challenge the system? And Fred Hampton was a, a Black Panther and, and doing community work. And he believes that part of, of, of the change is educating our people, their people, on why things happen. What is the importance of, of, of what is the past? Because we, need, we forget what happened pre-67, right? And, um, and where are we going as a people and how that is a mantra that we don't forget. And this is what happened. We have forgotten. That's why majority rule is not an important holiday to us. We say, man, why are we celebrating? Why? And the PLP trying to bring it out and haven't explained to us as yet of the importance of, of it, right? And the f and see no value in it, and then we have this debate. So, man, I go into the beach, man. That's the next order they give us. But we have yet to understand. But like I said, that's Fred Hampton. Fred Hampton on the importance of revolutionary education, and you can see that on YouTube. And um, I wanted to bring that up for the conversation. I have a text here. The text says, Nuri, both government can't have new ideas because they put the same people on every committee every time they are in power. An economist for 15 years saying the same idea. And that might be true, you know, but uh, this administration, in fact, uh, um, has put a number of young people. So I give them credit for that. I'm not seeing what revolutionary ideas they have put forward. But definitely they have put some new faces besides old faces too. I see a number of them have become ambassadors here. Everybody's an ambassador nowadays. But it is what it is. Say, so, Bishop, we are going forward in circles. That's what it is. <laughs> We're going forward in circles because this scene, this scene working, right? Recently in the newspaper, they have announced that sailing will be a national sport. Hey, Sailing will be a national sport. And people, when I was having a discussion, people said, but why are you vexed? It can't be cricket. Because no one in the Bahamas plays cricket. That's from the colonizers, right? And this is the same thing I'm saying. I say the colonizers dictate to us what should be the Bahamas' national sport and say, hey, you people down there, cricket can be a national sport, all right? And we accepted it for all these years, even post 50 years later, uh, for independence. And the government has decided, hey, it's our 50th anniversary. I'm, I'm going to give something for the behemoths to cheer about. We're going to make sailing a national sport. Mind you, I don't know a person who sails, but it, it is what it is. My problem with this is we are celebrating democracy where each man has a vote, where behemoths opinion matters, where such a thing should have been put forth to the behemoth people. It had to be no big uh, uh, election or anything. Could have been used one of those, uh, when the government have um, um, uh, shares in BTC in, in the life, could do one of those um, election polls via the phone and say, what you all think should be the national sport, right? And we vote on it and then they c tabulate and have a conclusion and say, okay, it could be in sale and I have no problem with it. But democ democracy demands that I participate. And I'm watching this preparation for the celebration of our 250th anniversary and I'm saying when will I participate on what we can have and, and celebrate and I said yes these buggers are colonizers they don't care they don't care about my opinion they don't care about democracy they don't care about involving me all they care about is being colonizers just like them said from pre-67 we have morphed the pigs have morphed into man they have morphed into the colonizer. And I am concerned because no one else seems to be concerned that we aren't doing this thing properly. Like we don't understand democracy. Democracy entails that all of us participate and benefit from this Bahamas. And I'm saying that you're all excluding me and I cannot cheer you all on, even though you mean well, right? So I applaud Salem. But I won't put the input there to say, man, why not basketball? Because everyone I know play basketball, but they don't give a damn about my opinion, nor any behaving opinion anyway. That's why they made the decision for us, because they colonize us. They tell you what the, colony, the colonies, mere colonies, uh, want. I have another caller there. Pass your caller there through, please. Go ahead, caller. Our president, good morning. Good morning there, Sparky. How you doing, sir? Go ahead, man. I'm doing well. You know, I hear your voice. 
But I was so saddened um, the other day when I saw that lady on that video who they said died in the Princess Margaret Hospital waiting for attention. And, and Sparky, I have no problem you talking about this. And my condolences to, to, the, to, to the family. Right, uh, the Darville family, because it, it, it bothered me, and I, I thought I would bring this into the conversation. However, if you can't link this to the conversation, Sparky, I would have to cut you. The cut, cut you. It, the conversation today is only, is only on where are we going as a people and how we fought short, how we che- we have become the colonizers. And if you can't link this into that conversation, I can't let you continue. Well, that's what I said. Give me a moment to link it. No, I can't it give in. you no link it. You got to link it, and then I get to let you continue. Yeah, see, I'm linking it in. No, no, no. Cause... Link it first. Go to go opposite. Link it first, and then go okay. Through. Why isn't after fifty years of celebrating headed to the World Fifty Independence, watching the opening ceremony at the start of this thing, that the most important things we're thinking about advancing us is a new house of assembly, and not a new hospital. After fifty years <laughs> celebrating every year as an independent nation. The first thing we can think about is the building of a new House of Assembly, a new Senate building, a new post office, a new district that they have implode, and we're not even thinking about the most important thing we need in our country is an up-to-date, modernized hospital to service the sick people in this country. That should be the first thing on the burner. That we, have afra- we are afraid to, I call it Princess Margaret Clinic. You concluded, Sparky? No, we are afraid to go to the hospital because we're scared we're going to die. They ain't got no beds to put us in. They ain't got no medicine to help us with. The nurses are tired. They just want to march for a raise. The doctors are tired. They want a raise. And we talk about building house assemblies and all these things. And we can't, we can't build a modern a hospital the rich people can afford to go to Life and Key Hospital. The rich people afford to go to doctor's hospital. The people south of St. Gregory's Heart scared to go to dog on PMH. They might not even get seen sitting on a granny for three days, bleeding to death and dying, and they take up a bill in a new house of assembly. We got foreigners coming in our country taking us over. They can't stop that. We got foreigners coming and taking over our land, building shanty towns. We can't break them down. How come we in charge of everything in our country, but we can't do nothing? We got the leaders telling us the law, I mean, the law says we can't break down the shanty down. Three years ago, they put a stop on that. But how come people can just come in my country, squat on the land, put feces and everything in the soil? Their children get sick with diseases. The children are 60% in our classrooms. And then they take the diseases. They get the diseases to our children. There's a bad... Yeah, and I, I hear you, Sparky. And you may raise some uh, some important points, particularly in regards to our march towards fifty and the in, inadequacy of us as a people. And I have to come say us. It's not the government because we make the government. It's us as a people. I wanted to extend my condolences to the Darvill family for the unfortunate uh, passing of of the mother there. And uh, it's sad. Um, I know Jared. Darvel. Um, I have met him. Uh, it's true politics and, and, and true activism. And he's a good fellow, uh, the person who believes in changing the Bahamas. In fact, he's an advocate, uh, he's an activist. And in his turmoil, in his pain, in his anguish, he included that the Bahamas need to change the system. That he reminded us that despite his pain that he's going through and the anger that he's feeling at this present time, that what is happening at the Princess Margaret Hospital cannot continue. And this is what I'm talking about, right? That after this good woman who had three children death, will the policy at Princess Margaret change or will it continue as usual, right? It can't be just, oh, she deserves, the family deserves compensation. When in the same breath, the same day as the death of this good woman, other people are sending out um, 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 notices. We need blood. We need blood or they will not give us any surgery and we will die. This is the narrative of for behemoths. That if they can't have convinced behemoths to send blood to them, the hospital just let them just, just dead. 
something is wrong with that as an independent nation of 50 years old. And we see in, 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 in next month, February, we can have the entire Caribbean, at least English Caribbean, Caricom will be in the Bahamas. They all will be watching us because some of them coming to celebrate our 50th anniversary along with the prince and kings and whoever could be inviting it down to march, mark our man and say how great we are as a country when we, I know we're doing really great because, you know, I watching, I watching, I want more, I deserve more. It can't be just this. This can't be the best. This is as good as it get. I have some more callers there. Patrick, call us there, through there please, producer. Go ahead, caller. Hello. Hello, you're on now. Mr. Louie, I really admire listening to you. Particularly, I, I'm certain you do a lot of research and the passion that you come with. You come with really salient points. What did the prime minister say? Nothing. But, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. sorry, sorry. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Well, I, 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 I ain't going interrupt you no more. Inspire, huh? I ain't going interrupt you no more. Go ahead. No, nothing to really inspire me, particularly. But I want to share something with you that Mr. Paul Adley told me some years ago while he was alive. He said, you know, I want to share something with you. There was the blacks. There was the PLP uh, called under who was for the blacks. And then there was the UBP. And there was also the Conky Joes. And he says that the, some members of the UBP treated the Conky Joes just as poorly as they treated the blacks. And so there was this three classes. And they actually, the, when the UBP realized that uh, Sir Lyndon was going to really win, they actually started investing in him. And that's how come they're able to remain with the status quo, because they put money into him, his campaigns, so when he won, he bear allegiance. So there's all talk, 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 all this to do, because you'll find that a lot of UBPs, or what was UBPs then, invest in the PLP just to keep the PLP going the way they want them to go. So I don't know what this man could say that would be revolutionary because there's nothing there because they receive funds from other people outside this country who are white and, and they have to cater to them, not us. So clearly any Bahamian who's expecting to, to see something new and innovative and change is not going to happen because the money talk. Thank you, Mr. That's, Paul. that's how I see it. I, I hear you and I appreciate the majority of what you said. I do appreciate it. But, Mr. Lou, is it possible that you could publish some of the, uh, you know, the, the, the work that you write? Uh, because listening to it is not as good as when you can read it over and over again. And particularly all of you Guardian Radio hosts, you come with so much dynamic talk, but it's forgotten. Maybe we need to archive what you all do, because I think that could face a change. What do you think? And I like that. And, and I'll take up that challenge. I'll take up that challenge right. to, to do something similar. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. Uh, before I go to the next uh, telephone caller, right? Um, during the 67, well, prior to the 67 election, there were four class of people who actually could have voted. No. There were those people who were qualified to vote were men who had property. They could have voted. Men who owned multiple properties could have voted three, four, five different times, right? So you, one, you had property. Then if you had multiple properties, you could have two, two, three, four uh, times, or two, three, four times. Then there were those who owned companies. If you had an incorporated company, um, you could have voted for your company. So you had a couple companies, you could have voted three, four, four, five times. And then there were the men and women who had nothing, who had had, had just access to the vote, and they didn't matter at all. So prior to 67, we had an unfair democracy. And this is why majority rule is supposed to be celebrated, because it meant, this meant that we finally moved to have a fair democracy. So I'm talking about democracy today and saying that our democracy ain't working fully well because they're not including us. Like, more people supposed to be involved in this celebration. How come there is no constitutional reform and, di and, and, and debates? How come the University of the Bahamas hasn't come up with some plan and said, this is the metrics we plan to use and moving forward? And we are celebrating 50. 50 years, that's man. That's old man. You know, that's only 20 more years. Oh, I'm just, I'm just, Lord, uh, promise us 70 times. That, yeah, that, that's my point, right? We have another caller here. We have another caller that I go to the text. Go ahead, caller. And queue up that, that next uh, play for the, right after this caller, please. Go ahead, caller. Caller, can you hear me? There's nothing, producer? You try it again? Go ahead, caller, can you hear me? No? So, uh, since I couldn't hear the caller, still nothing? 
Let's queue up and play the um, that 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 second clip for me. And so all our elected officials, by not having a national plan, quasi turn into thieves. They are capitalists. They are there to get rich, maintain rich, and be rich. How could you be elected official and also be a capitalist to get rich of the same system? By proxy, they are thieves. And um, we have seen politicians who have become rich offer $20,000. Mega millionaire, mega millionaire, right? We have seen our politicians um, come in there as working class bohemians, you no, know, making forty, fifty thousand dollars a year, but their house is worth two, three, four million dollars, right? Now we have in all kind of politicians rumored to be. Oh, well, we have one or two who have been arrested and charged and gone to the courts because we see them got returned millionaires. We just couldn't explain it, you know. And then some get off. We got, even we had to, had our governments pay them off afterwards. And man, since we couldn't prove that you didn't move the money, uh, let's see, see something is wrong, man. <laughs> something is wrong. That's my point. And we smile, you know. We take it politics, and man, that's one of our boys. So we, I don't care that uh, one of our boys get rich off of twenty thousand dollars, right? Once it's one of our boys. And, and then, you know, they have rumor that one, two more people can get arrested in the, in the soon. But once you see, something is wrong, I tell you. Something is wrong. But let's go back to the caller. Patch the caller through. Let me hear what they're saying. Go ahead, caller. Got it. How are you doing? How you doing, man? I'm good, man. A very pleasant good morning to you. Enjoying your commentary this morning. Thanks very much, sir. And, um, well, you hit the nail right on the head. Um, unfortunately, um, we are the forgotten people in our own country, eh? Lord have mercy on me. And um, really and truly, um, if what you are suggesting is true with regards to the sound by such a plane, then respect to our leadership, then we're in trouble. We're in trouble. We're in trouble, right? Uh, but this has been brewing a little while, a long time now, right? And we... As a people, unfortunately, have laid domicile. We've been passive about things. We grumble in our own small quarters, etc. But I will tell you this, my brother. Mm. There is an awakening going on. You think? I like telling you, the Bahamian public is saying, generally speaking, no more. We've sat and we've watched for decades the same behavior go unchecked. Right? And people are tired. When you're marginalized in your own country, you have no rights. You feel like you have no rights. This development is going up. That development is going up. And obviously, what do we get? Oh, we maybe get a little job. But there's no forward thinking in terms of creating uh, entrepreneurial opportunities for Bahamians. How do we make that happen? Yeah, there are some things that they have put in place. But everybody, by and large, generally speaking, are not benefiting, not in the main, Right? When we talk about the transportation issues in this country, right, could be fixed. But we talk about these things and, and it's forgotten, right? Uh, what about uh, using um, um, the natural resources, right, to, to, to get rid of this uh, archaic system that we use in terms of uh, uh, power generation in this country? We have the wind, we have solar capacity. All of this is, is, is knowledge that people... Uh, 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 able to go ahead and research and see for themselves because information is at their fingertips. All you got to do is pick up your, your smartphone. But there is special interest, and that is what these persons are catering to. And I can give example after example after example of where we can be forward-thinking, innovative, and, and progressive. What about natural gas? We talked about that idea for some time, right? But there are so many different things. Um, and I want to say this, uh, KB wrote a song some time back, right? Jokey leaders in a jokey town. A three-ring circus with a bunch of clowns. But I encourage my brothers and sisters, and I believe the time is now, don't sit idly by messing around with this two-party system that has gotten us nowhere for decades and decades and decades. I'm not a political person at all. And I've had the good fortune of sitting where you sit, Mr. Nui, on a numerous of occasions. And the sad part is, you know what? I hope we act sooner rather than later. I propose to uh, 
slowly bringing this thing along and we suffer for another decade. Thank you for taking my call, sir. Thanks for it. I'll continue to listen. Certainly. The caller reminded us about KB's song, Jokey Leaders in a Jokey Town, a three-ring circus uh, and, uh, and uh, one in one horse town or something to that effect. And I listened to that, right, and reminded that it's not the jokey leaders alone, you know. It's the town that's jokey. It's us. We are. Just, the, the clouds entertaining us because we're a jokey town. We have a responsibility to tell the clouds and what to do, but we ain't doing it. Our uh, text here says, why are we using a sport that the majority of Bohemians are not involved in as a national sport? See, that don't bother me, you know. Because I like, I mean, I don't know anyone who does sailing. I'd like, but I like sailing. I love the idea of it, right? That sailing is our national sport. My problem is democracy dictates that I participate in the concluding what the national sport is. And if I'm not participating inside it, that means I'm in a dictatorship. And whoever made that decision is out of pocket. Uh, using, uh, uh, um, um, what, a, what a guy name? What a rapper? Who say out of pocket? Who said the word out of pocket? Anyway, that rapper there say out oh, of pocket. We have another call there. Pastor call it through. Then we go in a commercial break. Go ahead, caller. Hey, sir. How you doing, man? All is well. Like yo, I hear you were saying something a little earlier about uh, concerning this independent thing. What they doing mm-hmm. for the uh, for the fiftieth anniversary? Yeah, go ahead. Right. Uh, no, what I want to ask you, did you listen to the Prime Minister on uh, what she name? Leslie Miller concerning uh, the rest of things, what they doing for the rest of this year? Mrs. Bryce and the Prime Minister, um, um, Philip Davis. Yes, I, I heard it. I was, I was out there. It yeah, was a good, she, it was a good she, ceremony. She was the, she was the thing up. Yeah. She was the chair. Didn't, uh, didn't both of them said that whatever any vehement, any vehement wanted to do, Concerning this move, they are welcome to come and let them know so they could be a part of it. What does that mean? No, because you said something. I asked what that I mean. That's why I said that, that, what I mean. What I mean. What I mean. You were saying you were saying something earlier that yeah, I, you I, are not a part of it. Yes. Huh? Yes, and I asked you what does that mean? I mean, you, no, you well, stop. I guess according to what they were saying, that means if you want to partake in something or you have something uh, you could bring to the table, all you got to do is go to them. And they'll make it happen. And I ask you, what does that mean? That means, well, they are being more open to the larger community. Okay. I can do a poll now. Huh? And I can ask you right now, where do you send your information? You you listen to it. Where do you send it? Where is it in, concerning what? The the Independence Day celebration. You said that they yeah, make a note. I say, where? Whatever they do. In. See, it can't be whatever. You got to be specific oh, no. now. You introduce a new thing, and I say, be specific. If you don't know, say, Mr. Nuri, Nuri, well, well, I know. What they say they're doing, they are celebrating the uh, 50th anniversary starting from now until next year. Mm. Uh, next year, July. Mm-hmm. But now, what I'm saying is, mm-hmm. they are doing something to uh, lift up the Bahamas. And I ask you, what is it? Just well, tell me. According to where it started off yesterday, with, uh, not the other day, it started off with uh, some showing the things, what they're doing, the logo. They present the logo, and they uh, had a couple other young people them, what was doing some things concerning um, advancing the nation. So Give, give me an example. Give me, give, me, give, me, give me an example. But, you won't give me no example yet? No, I'm still here waiting. But just what... But that's what, uh, Siri, mm-hmm. race is not for the swift. Oh, just wait. you got to wait and see who went door. You know, mm-hmm. you can't start something and say, it's finished. I understand. You've got to start it, and when it's finished, then you make your decision mm-hmm. whether they did good or whether they did bad. Mm-hmm. You know? Remember, all of us is one, you know. Mm-hmm. All of us is one, man. All of us in this together. I understand. When they fail, we fail. I agree. So... We need to try and, like, uh, one McCartney used to do, mm-hmm. what they put to the fire. Um, you know about, uh, uh, um, um, what do you call it? I don't remember the name. Marcus? Huh? You know about Marcus? Who? I, you, I mean, you know, ever heard the story about Marcus? Marcus? Marcus. What's that? Is? Marcus. Don't worry about the name. Marcus. He was the last person to try get into the, the, the boat with Noah, but he came too late, and they sailed without him. But I, 
But that being said, I would text y'all. Said, good morning, sir. <laughs> Tell me something. If I'm a 61 year old who has retired from the gov- from a government job with a monthly pension until death of fourteen hundred dollars, a NIB pension of five hundred dollars, and a salary of two thousand two hundred a month, how is it that the lenders can't give me a loan for one year to purchase an eight thousand dollar vehicle based on my salary pensions that I can afford? The vehicle is my for my daughter who just got an aviation job but is on, on probation and living home, who intends to give me half of the, of the payment. Isn't pension for life? Why would banks turn one down based on the salary and disregard additional government incomes? That's wrong. Uh, when you retire, there's a, a, a risk. You know, there's a risk. You know, they stop giving people loans after 50 and thing, man. I, I feel you. And, and perhaps you just need to save some money. And, and buy that, that, that thing cash, right? The Bahamas 50th uh, logo design is not new. It's a duplicate of all logos designed by the Bahamas printing. The logo is the same, and why three flamingos? Oh, I have no problem with the logo, no. In fact, I like the logo. I think the logo is beautiful. I see a number of persons uh, were enraged about it, incensed about it, but they should have participated. They could have drawn and participate and put in their own design, and the government would have decided... Um, uh, what it is would be the best design, right? But anyway, let's go on a commercial break. Let's put put a commercial break and see how I come back. Call and p- pick you up on the next side. Go ahead, there. Always on the go? Miss the show? You can now listen to Guardian Radio talk shows anytime, anywhere on Spotify and YouTube by searching Guardian Radio 96.9 FM or by entering the name of your favorite show. You can also listen by logging on to GuardianTalkRadio.com and clicking on the podcast tab. Guardian Radio, continuing to provide you with fresh news and smart talk anywhere, anytime, all day. Love the show? Want to give your support? Become a sponsor today. Call 302-2300 for our rates and packages. That's 302-2300. Become a sponsor on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The new Guardian Radio app is here. Listen live to all our Guardian Radio shows and live video stream select programs in our studio. Get information about Guardian Radio shows and our hosts. Send messages including text, email, and even call. All from our amazing new Guardian Radio app. Download it free today in your app store for your Apple device or Play Store for your Android device. The all new and improved Guardian Radio app. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. We got some jokey leaders in a jokey town. A tree ring circus, what a bunch of clowns. They're joking and they're jiving, man, they're messing around. Moving forward, we need to hold our government, our leaders, more accountable. And we need to analyze their speeches and then challenge them on it. Say, man, if it's adequate, say it's adequate. And if it's inadequate, say, no, man, I want more. What you're saying is not enough. And I'm finding that we are allowing our leaders to get away with almost anything, right? Um, I, something I wanted to bring uh, to your attention, which I want to bring up on Wednesday, because Wednesday, Aaron and I have our mash up um, Wednesday. And we're going to be talking immigration again, right? And... I wanted to talk about uh, Haitian tourism, and the Haitian tourism I mean the tourists who come from Haiti, uh, from Haiti via the plane. I know that we are not having another bout of high um, COVID numbers again, right? And I remember when the nation of Haiti said that there were there no vaccines, right? And I remember that the majority of people in Haiti wasn't vaccinated any kind of way, but we still have a large number of them coming as tourists and nobody is concerned about that. And, 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 and it's not a big thing for me, you know. It's not a big thing for me, but it should be a part of the, the discussion, particularly by the Minister of Health. Because I am, and, and particularly the Minister of Health didn't speak about the death recently, but we, could, we uh, I just said, I, I am concerned. Like, we're not having the correct narrative. Um, before I go, I, I also wanted to speak that um, I, I watch Lincoln, you know, 
I watch a link and we can talk about that on Wednesday. Um, him accosting and stopping uh, people on the road and talking about, uh, and ordering them to produce um, documents and stuff like he's some kind of policeman or immigration officer. I, I'm watching that. He can talk to the wrong person. I want a Negro stop me. I want a Negro stop me because I have dark skin and high cheekbones and ask me who I is so I could tell him a couple of choice words. I have a couple of choice words I practice over the years. I want to tell him and see how it again. You, you think I used to, you see? Anyway, I can talk about that soon. And before I go, let me see if I can read one or two of these texts just to make sure that people um, know that I'm reading them. One text says, tell me, why do we attack our own when they try to point out the corruption and issues in our country and they be alarmed when tragedies happen, like the death of the young lady in the hospital, like immigrants continue to breach our borders, like murder bulletins that have the last name of Haitians all over it. Why do we attack our own rather than acknowledge and address and fix the issues? Tell me, why? Because it's an attack and you don't come up with no, any solutions. No solutions at all. All you do is incensing people to revolt and riot and destroy. And if you can't come up with no ideas, you ain't helping me at all, right? We know we have an immigration problem. We knew we had it about 25 years ago. And I have some ideas on how we should tackle it. And we should all be putting forward ideas on how to tackle it. Not accosting people on the, side of the, on, on, on the road as you police. No, you can't be doing that. Okay, there is self-hate amongst black people. We just know, we just how we treat one another is how we feel about ourselves. Just the way how we treat one another is how we uh, feel about each other, I think the text is saying. Um, I see the text with the flamingos. I see no reason why, I have no problem with the three flamingos on it, um, on the logo, national logo. And again, I think the national logo is very good. I applaud them for the efforts. Um, I, I hope moving forward that is more inclusive of Bohemians participating in the celebration. Um, so that's what I, I'm, I'm advocating for that. Uh, we mentioned about the sports already. So Brave say at least we in lockdown us. Uh, Brave say at least I ain't have your lockdown. He say I free your black people and y'all still complaining. Great show as usual. Say seventy thousand for a property. We we as Bohemians we want gated community. So you better talk money. One hundred and fifty thousand for the property. I hear that. And um, even the term "but gated community" is a concern for for me. There are a number of gated communities springing up, which is closing us in. And moving forward, I I, I you know what I want to talk about. I can talk with Aaron, getting ready to play the music, about these hotels who have now found a tricky way from blocking Bohemians from getting the Axon Beach. Um, I see Albany has created a pair, and next to their pair, they dredged the whole beach that Bohemians can't walk along the sand anymore because there's ocean there to make sure no one pass. The same thing happened to Sanders with their beach. They created a pair and dredged all the way underneath it. Anyway, I gotta go. We'll talk about that later. Have a wonderful day.